What's up guys, back again with another video. English Dan, obviously, Fat Dan, whatever you want to call him. What have we got today? We have this. You're like, what the hell is this? This, my friends, is the LG Wing. And this does this. And I'll show you why in a minute. All right, welcome back, guys. So, yeah, this is the LG Wing. This is LG's latest phone. Came out around the end of October, beginning of November. If I did an unboxing video, if you watched that, I don't know whether you did. Showing you a little bit about the phone. But it is actually a really well-built phone. Like I say, it does have the party trick. Look at the horrendous weather where I am. They're saying we're going to have, like, 10 inches of snow tonight. Just fun. Anyway. Really well-built phone. Let's talk about the build quality of this thing. So straight away, you have a really nice screen on here. It is only a 60 hertz panel. Shock, horror. I know a lot of people are into the 120 hertz. I am one of them. I do like the 120 hertz panels. Sadly, the wing does not come with that. But what it does come with is a 6.8 inch OLED display. And it is a very nice display. Everything looks good on it. Everything's very sharp. The resolution is 2460 by 1080. So it's a full HD plus display. No QHD on this, but I don't know about a lot of you people watching, but I nowadays when you get a good OLED screen, it's very hard to discern the difference. Well, maybe it's because I'm older and obviously I'm wearing glasses, but I just don't see the difference. I really don't. Or it's very minuscule to the point that it doesn't really matter to me. But also underneath that, when you do the, the wing, and you slide the screen, you also have a separate screen underneath. This is also an OLED display, 3.9 inch. I think it's 1280. Actually, it's 1240 by 1080. So, again, very sharp. It does work independent from the actual top screen itself, which is quite nice. I'll get more onto that shortly. But yeah, the build quality on this thing is quite nice. It's glass on the back. you got your triple camera hump there more on that shortly LG did away with something here that they used to be like the pioneers of cameras and gave you everything you needed you're missing one on this but yeah it is kind of heavy it weighs more than the iPhone 12 Pro Max so if you are one of those people who thought that was a heavy device you're gonna really find this heavy but it feels well made what happens when you flip the screen when it comes to the build quality so it is quite stable but one thing I do find is I'm getting a little it I don't know whether this is on all of them that worries me a little bit it's like the screen rocks backwards and forwards from the top I mean don't get me wrong it's not horrendous but if I was driving and I was hitting bumps I'm pretty sure I'd hear that not really took it out in the car as yet but yeah, the screen does have a little bit of a, a wobble about it once it's in this T position, which, you know, it can't be rock solid, otherwise it'd scratch the actual display on the knee. So it does have to have a little bit of play in there for that to happen. On the back of the actual um, swivel display, it is a plastic. So no glass under there. That helps with keeping the weight down as well. Like I say, it is a heavy phone because it is quite a thick phone. I mean, it's not much thicker than... Um, like the iPhone 11 Pro Max from last year, but it is definitely thicker and it's obviously all made of glass, so it is hefty. When you get around the side, you do have your volume buttons here, very nice and clicky. And then you have your power button at the bottom. It does have an in-screen fingerprint sensor as well. It is an optical one. It's not the fastest, but it is pretty accurate. It, uh, it doesn't miss an awful lot, as you can see. So again, it does what it needs to do. It does the job. It's easy to find, nine times out of 10, it unlocks, which I'm happy with. When you get to the bottom of the device, you'll see here you have the micro SD card, USB-C charging port, and then a single down firing speaker. And it is only a mono speaker. Well, I, mean, I think it is, I mean, I couldn't hear any volume coming out the top, so I'm going with it's a mono speaker. It is quite loud, but it is a little bit tinny. Not a lot of depth in there, and I'll show you that shortly as well. Then nothing on this side of the phone, Sorry, I said your micro SD was down at the bottom. That's a microphone. I'm telling a lie. Then you have your SD and SIM card combo on this side here. On the top of the device, you'll see there's a little gap there. This does have a pop-up camera, as you'll see on the front of the screen. 
let's see if we can get it to there you go there is no notch no nothing it is just all screen at the front which i really like i like the pop-up cameras these little holes that they put in the screens and things like that don't do it for me i wish they'd have gone with the pop-up camera and refined that like the OnePlus 7 Pro. I think that design there was ahead of the OnePlus 8 and the OnePlus 8 Pro. And I'm glad that LG went with that with this. Though it does have some bezels at the top. Again, as you can see there, and you can see some slight bezels at the side. It's a curved display, but it's a very minor curve. It's not something that you're going to get phantom touches with or anything like that. So, yeah, it does have a small chin, small forehead. So there is little bezels there, but again, it's nothing to actually like, oh God, that is a hideous looking phone. I think this is actually one of the best looking phones LG have actually ever made. It just feels really well built, built like a tank, to be honest. And it just screams quality. This would have been awesome. I, I mean, the rumor is that LG's mobile side is going to go away or they're going to license it out or sell it off or whatever. But... The V60 was supposedly the last V phone. It's such a shame because this here, if you didn't have the swivel display, you put the DAC in here, this would have been an awesome V70. It really would. It would have been really nice. But sadly, I don't think that's going to happen. One thing that is missing from this, mentioning the DAC, and we've not had this on any of the LG flagships since the V60. The Velvet hasn't and neither has the Wing. They got rid of the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which also gets rid of the DAC, which is a shame because LG phones do sound fantastic when it comes to using uh, real good wired earbuds. If you use the uh, earbuds from Periodic Audio, they do sound fantastic on LG devices. They just, the, the phone itself can pump out the, the, the power needed to make the music sound that much better. And like I say, unfortunately, this doesn't come with that bit of a kick in the teeth but i can understand lg trying to cut costs and save space where they can obviously there's a lot going on with this device so what's this phone like when it comes to using it well it's actually quite nice i really do like it now when you do do this and you get the doo doo i said doo doo whatever you get the launcher that works the um fingerprint sensor so LG have got a custom launcher, so you get this carousel at the top. There is a lack of apps that work in this mode, but the camera is good in one of them, and it gives you gimbal mode. I'll show you that shortly. Um, but then there's other things like you can watch YouTube, and I can open my Twitter, and I can read my Twitter while I'm watching a video. Here's a quick sound test for you. You'll hear what the, the speaker's like. Let's go to an actual, we'll go to a speaker review so you can hear some music being playing through it. Single firing speaker. That sounds good. Nothing coming out of the top, so it is just one mono speaker. I mean, it's okay. I'm just gonna tell you right now. Oh yeah, really, Dan? You ain't gonna tell me that's nothing. Anyway, so while that's great and everything, there is one problem I find with this, and as you'll see, there's no volume on the screen, so you've got to press the buttons. But when the screen's like this, guess where the buttons are? They're on the back of the device here, and they're so close, they are very difficult to reach. It's, I mean, you can, but it's awkward. It'd have been nice if they'd have brought the volume buttons down lower. I know it may have been awkward when you were using it as a regular phone, but it would have been nice if they could have done that, or maybe incorporated them into the back, like they used to on some of the phones. It used to be an up and down. Uh, above and below the camera and that would have been a nice touch to come back to on this but you know what it's their first try at something wacky like this in a long time and um, I think they did quite a good job when it comes to that like I can say the sounds okay it's not great it is only a single firing speaker but overall it does do a good job the uh, the screen like I said does look really good um, I have no problems with the screen at all People are going to moan because it's not high refresh rate, but I have no problems with that. The 765G in this with the 8 ped with the 8 gig of RAM, you don't get any stuttering or anything like that. Even when it, it switches to its uh, wing launcher. So let's just, you know, in the carousel here, it's really not an issue. You hit the gallery, it opens up. Man knocked the microphone off himself. Look at the weather here. 
but yeah it actually does have a really capable camera as well you can do effects just by sliding up more on the camera in a second but yeah it, it's it's a nice first attempt from lg i just wish there would be more and sadly i don't know whether there's going to be but maps works in this mode as well so you can open maps on this screen if you want and have your music on here it, it does change around the screen does see Ooh. so it is quite intuitive i do like the way it does this it's nice for when you know it's what's good about this it's nice when i'm laying in bed and i'm watching youtube up above and i'm on twitter and i'm absolutely roasting my friend adam matlock aka tech odyssey i roast him daily i feel bad sometimes no i don't actually i, I don't feel bad one bit but anyway what's up guys english Dan back with another video so just got this so when it comes to the battery life on this thing it's got a 4000 milliamp hour battery let me tell you this thing sips the juice it really does especially in standby mode this thing will it, it, it's like an iphone when it comes to standby it takes very little to sit there you can leave it for days and come back to it and it'll still have plenty of battery in it really impressed even when using it i'm getting easily all day out of it and some so if batteries uh something you're worried about with this device you've got no worries whatsoever battery is exceptional when it comes to this phone also while we're touching on battery charging on this it does have quick charge uh four and it does come with a 25 watt charger in the box so in a day and age where companies are removing chargers these go ahead and give you a 25 watt fast charger in the box as well so yeah real good when it comes to giving you the accessories you need really unlike a certain company who took a charger out of a box then gave you a cable that wouldn't work with the previous charger so when it comes to the cameras on this you do get a 64 megapixel uh, main shooter which is really nice it takes some really sharp photos now what it does do it combines four smaller pixels does the pixel binning thing then it puts them together to make them actually a brighter picture and like i say it competes really well with the galaxy note 20 ultra it even competes well with the new s21 ultra it can hold its own when it comes to the uh the main camera video is pretty good stabilization is good also has the fancy gimbal mode as you can see on the screen right now you get the controls at the bottom and the video at the top and you can i mean it kind of cheats the way it's doing it it's cropping in and allowing you to move the camera around so basically you're just moving the screen around but still it's a nice feature something very different also as a 117 degree i think it's 117 degree wide angle camera you know lg are like they have your main camera you have your wide angle so 13 megapixel on this and it still takes some really good pictures too i'm very impressed with the cameras one thing it doesn't have which stunned me really because lg have always thrown the kitchen sink at you with the cameras no telephoto this time around the pop-up camera on this though is 32 megapixels and again takes some really good portrait shots and really sharp photos so overall the cameras on this are really impressive like very very good you you if you would not be upset if you were using this phone and using it for your photography it, it does do a good job so yeah that's about it for the lg wing what do i think about it using it daily well i've been using it now for almost two weeks and i've actually really enjoyed this phone now maybe i've not used it with the screen like this so much but i have used it in bed with the screen like this so i've had youtube up at the top and i've been browsing on the bottom or chatting away which is a nice feature and it is nice to have and it's something i would miss if i didn't have the phone i think when it comes to lying in bed it's just a a decent phone for me when it comes to doing that in daily like average daily use it does stay in this candy bar style and i do like it i like heavier phones i know some people don't like heavy phones i do like heavier phones it just makes it feel more premium and this definitely does feel like a premium device like i say it's glass all the way around and there's no scratches on this and i've not used a case with it and i've not treated it any different than anything else so it is standing up to my daily rigors so yeah it is a really nice device like i said solid cameras has pretty good performance out of that 765g if you've used the phone with that processor before it's the same processor that you find in the pixel 5 very capable very fast it's fine for gaming 
no problems whatsoever. The eight gig of RAM helps this just go along. It's very rare you get a stutter or anything like that. I'm just really happy with it. I think this is the best phone LG have made in quite some time. The V60 and the Velvet were really good, but I think this is really nice and it's interesting because of the different form factor. Now, is there some downsides to it? Yeah, LG's skin is, mm, it's okay. I mean, it's a lot better than it has been. And especially when you got to the V60, the Velvet, and now the Wing, the software is a lot better. But I do think they do a lot better for themselves if they could use a, a modified stock version, you know, instead of having a duplicate apps and things like that. But yeah, other than that, I mean, it's been pretty, it's been pretty good. There's plenty of options in there with this. When you go into the settings, there's a lot with it. Oh, and it, obviously it has 5G with it having the 765G. So you do get 5G with this device. I've enjoyed using it. It's been good. The cameras are very solid. The software is, like I could say, it's okay. The biggest downfall is the software and it's the ecosystem for the wing. So when you, do this with the phone there's only limited apps that this will work with and unfortunately i don't see any other developers really jumping on this to develop apps for this device to work in that mode so you are kind of stuck with what you get from lg but like i say it's a, you don't have to use it it's an added bonus price of the phone is 996 it's not cheap by any means but like I say, it is built really well. Maybe you can get it like at T-Mobile. This is the T-Mobile version. I believe AT&T and Verizon also carry it. And Verizon's version is uh, an ultra wideband version, whereas the T-Mobile version, I believe, is not. But you can get this right now at T-Mobile for half off. And only a few weeks ago, it was down to 696, I believe. So when it comes to a $700 device, this thing is just so premium for that. I think it's a... A really good buy. I enjoyed it. I'm pretty sure you'll enjoy it. It's just a shame that people aren't giving it the attention it deserves. This is a really good phone, LG. If you're wondering whether you should go get one, I'm going to say why not. You will like it, especially if you like LG phone. It's missing the telephoto lens. It's missing the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack without the DAC, but it does have micro SD cards and you can put up to two terabyte in there. So it does have things going for it that do outweigh for me the bits that are missing. All right, guys, that's English Dan. This is the LG Wing. I'll catch you in the next one. Laters.